This news just coming down. LaShawn McCoy going to be getting shady in Buffalo. The bottom line is almost every decision that you have to make is governed by money. Traded to the Bills for linebacker Kiko Alonso. You'd love to keep everybody if you could pay everybody. It was really essential for us to get Mark back here. Free agency in full swing. Sam Bradford to the Eagles for Nick Foles. The deal with Sam Bradford, if he never tore his ACL, he'd never be traded. DeMarco dumping Dallas for the Eagles. We didn't think we were going to be able to get involved with DeMarco because we thought the price was going to be too high for us, but it took less money to come to our place, which says a lot about DeMarco. DeMarco isn't the only big name running back to sign in Philadelphia today. Ryan Matthews, also an Eagle. Well, our plan is when we made the decision to trade LaShawn that we were going to replace him with two guys. Tim Tebow is back in the NFL. I've always been a fan of Tim. The Eagles will sign the quarterback today. This after Tebow worked out with Philly back in mid-March. Not one single quarterback on that roster is not disposable. To get something, you have to give something up. If he's going to trade LaShawn McCoy, Deshaun Jackson away from his team, he would trade anybody. Everything's a one-year season for everybody. Yeah, a little bit of a busy offseason there in Philly for the Eagles and Chip Kelly. As you know, Nick Foles out, Sam Bradford in via trade. LaShawn McCoy also on his way to Buffalo with the trade that brought Kiko Alonso to Philly. Jeremy Macklin signing with the Chiefs in free agency. So you're, you're counting this right. Leading passer, rusher, and receiver all gone for the Eagles. Now the Patriots... Well, they've had, if you if you take a look back in history, kind of a similar trend here. You remember Ty Law released, yeah. Lawyer Malloy Huge, released. Real controversial. Yeah, yes. Randy Moss, and most recently Logan Mankins mm -hmm. uh, traded yeah. beginning of the season a year ago there down to Tampa, which uh, kind of begs the comparison here with Chip Kelly now leading the Eagles and Bill Belichick there with the Patriots. We know these two guys uh, have a relationship as we got Curtis Conway, Steve Weish, and Brian Baldinger here for a little roundtable discussion on these two guys. Um, we know they, they kind of influence each other. Now, talking management styles in particular right here, I feel like Eagles fans probably saying a lot of the same things that Patriots fans have said over the years. Mm -hmm. How are we going to win without this guy? How are we going to win without Logan Mankins? How are we going to win without LaShawn McCoy? But it sounds like Bill Belichick is always saying no one is greater than the system or the team. Now, do you guys feel like that's, uh, that, that's kind of rubbing off on Chip Kelly? Oh, there's no bit? question. I mean, that's who Chip is. I mean, they've scrimmaged each other the last two years, Chip's first two years in the league. And when you watch those scrimmages, both in New England and Philadelphia, I mean, Chip and Bill are side by side. They're comfortable next to each other. I think they've challenged each other. I think they both glean things from one another. No question about it. But I, I think that you can say that Chip is building his Eagles in Bill's eyes and yeah. with the way that he has done it, wrangled control, of uh, personnel like he has right there, uh, making Bill, all these decisions. Bill has won, right? Bill has well, won for a Brady. decade. No, he's got <laughs> Tom Brady. And that's the one constant that Bill has always had. And, and look, that's the, that's the thing, though. Bill Belichick has won when right. he's made with Chip Kelly. Okay, he's, he's won, won some won ball games. games. Yeah, no, yeah. He's, he's, he's done an impressive job, and now he's got control all of a sudden he's blowing it up. And I think what you see with the Patriots, when I, when I look at some of their moves, is they tend to let guys go by saying, we are not going to pay a certain limit at a certain position. And once a guy gets to that certain mm -hmm. limit, whether it's age, whatever, we're going to let him go. If it hurts us, like with Lawyer Malloy, it hurts us, but we're still going to be able to live with that and win. Rather a little early than Whereas, too late. Right? right. With yeah. Chip, it seems like he decided, I'm just going to get all my leaders off the team. You talked about losing your leading receiver, yeah. rusher, and, and some of the other players. They also lost some of their best offensive linemen, and Todd Harriman and Evan Mathis. Right. Other strong voices, persuasive voices in that locker room. Those guys are gone. So everybody coming in now is kind of starting the Chip Kelly Way and Curtis. I mean, I don't know if that's a thing right there. If Chip thinks he's back at Oregon, <laughs> in Oregon, you got these guys on scholarship. Him there well, first of all, you may not like what Chip Kelly is doing, but I totally respect what he's doing. He's doing it his way. And if you're going to win or lose, do it your way. And that's what I like uh, the way Bill Belichick and Chip is doing it. They're not branches off someone else's tree where we got to copycat and do something. Mm -hmm. Now, Chip is saying, look, th my system has worked. And I go back to when he was at Oregon. Yeah. You look at the type of players that he had at Oregon. He had a bunch of three- and two-star guys and made this team a national power. I'm not saying that's going to work in the National Football League, but that's his ego. When he got in the league, he won 10 games. Then he won 10 games again with quarterbacks. Now, think about the quarterbacks that he had. The quarterbacks, probably no one wanted. Right. He won 10 games with these quarterbacks. Right. Yeah. So why shouldn't he have this well, the one thing chip I say, on Kurt, his shoulder that he can get it done? The one thing I would say is that Bill – really allows his players to be stars. You know, Gronk is a star. Right. You know, the players that have come through there, Ty Law was a star. Mm -hmm. He allowed those guys to play within their system. Yeah. I don't know that Chip 
is allowing that right now for it's the only, guys to be. It's only been two years. I know, though, but guys. some of the biggest stars are gone. Now, for whatever reason. Well, it could right. be money. It could be didn't buy into the culture. It could be productivity. It could be a lot of different things. But their biggest stars that have been there over those last two yes. years are gone. Well, and one of, the, one of the interesting things here is while Chip may be kind of trying to emulate Bill management style in terms of roster building, but Bill has really picked Chip's brain in terms of yeah. some of the on-the-field oh, stuff. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, look, we, we talked about when Chip came in, oh, he runs his hurry-up offense. The, the Patriots have been doing this for years right, because, you know, they met years ago when Chip was a coach in New Hampshire. Uh, would come down to practices. Bill picked his mind, you know, a lot about the tempo offense, the high-speed offense. So that door kind of swings both ways of one guy kind of poaching from another. Mm -hmm. But that's on-field stuff, off-the-field yeah. stuff. This is feast or famine for Chip Kelly. If this gets sideways in Philadelphia, it's going to get ugly very quickly. Yeah, the time is now for wins to start piling up there in Philly, mm -hmm. not just in the regular season, mm -hmm. but in the playoffs as well.